Hello, my name is Samira and welcome back to my channel. I cannot believe we're already halfway through the year, but that means it's time for the mid-year book freakout tag. Conveniently, I have just finished my Goodreads goal for this year, which first of all, this has never happened this early on into the year, and second of all, I've never read this many books six months into the year before until this year. I figured this was the perfect opportunity to sit down and discuss the best and the worst books I've read so far this year. So we're starting off strong with the best book I've read so far in 2021. For that, I can't help but choose This Is How You Lose the Time War. This book was the best mindfuck I have the pleasure of experiencing in my entire life and this is me having already watched Inception. I'm not sure if this is actually getting adapted yet but if and when this does get adapted it's gonna step all over Inception. Inception is gonna be blown out of the water. This is the simplest way that I can describe this book so it's following these two different spies on opposite sides of a time war. They are communicating with each other through letters, but as the book progresses on, more and more feelings are added to the mix and they end up starting to develop feelings for each other. The way I would describe this book is like that TikTok audio, two best friends in a room, they might kiss, except in this case, it's two opposing spies on opposite ends of the time war corresponding with one another through different time periods they might kiss eventually who knows that alone was just amazing but the way that they wrote these letters these correspondences were just quality content taste excellent chef's kiss and it's unlike anything i've ever read before honestly i can't do justice how to explain how i felt about this book i will say i was confused for almost all of it if not all of the book but honestly that's just how the book is it's just not at all built on logic and so that's sort of part of the joy of that book and what makes it so unique after i finished it i could not stop thinking about it and it was just such a unique experience probably the most beautiful writing i have ever had the experience of reading if you want to read this book it's definitely going to be an experience you will not soon forget and if you're looking for something new to read I highly recommend reading this book. If we're talking about best reading experience I've had this year, by far, this is how you lose the time where it takes the cake. However, for honorable mentions, I can't help but add these as well. It just wouldn't sit right with me. So we have Neon Gods by Katie Robert. This is probably my favorite Hades and Persephone retelling I've read to date. Hands down, my favorite rendition of Hades. I'm obsessed with him. They were everything in this book. If you're a Hades of Persephone enthusiast like I am, I cannot recommend that book enough to you. I've been telling all of my friends to drop everything and read that book as soon as possible. It was so, so good. And I also need to include People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. I have a weird relationship when it goes to friends to lovers just because Love Rosie burned me so much when I watched it years ago that I just, yeah, friends to lovers and also slow burn romances, that just messed me up and I just haven't felt the same way about those two tropes since then, but this book single-handedly changed my perspective on friends to lovers. This was so good. Also, the power of this book. This saved me from my slump that I was in. I was really struggling to read in April. I know I did the Asian readathon, but I was struggling. I completed it, but I was struggling a lot. And I just needed something to rejuvenate me in regards to reading. And this did that for me. It single-handedly, like I said, saved me from my slump, pulled me out of it and said, not today. I just adore them so much and it was so so good and I've never been so invested in a friends to lovers romance before and I love how this delves into their relationship as friends before they even delve into romantic feelings. It was so wholesome and so healthy and I just loved them so much. So yes, also highly recommend. So next up, we have best sequel you've read so far this year. I don't think I've actually read a lot of sequels this year, but of course, one comes to mind. That being Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare. If you've watched the vlog I have of me reading this book, you already know 
the emotional, mental, and spiritual journey I went on while reading this book. Like I said, I don't think I've read many sequels, but yes, by far best sequel I've read so far this year. Next up, we have new release you haven't read yet but want to. So this year, there have been a lot of new releases that have come out that I've been really excited about and also I haven't had a chance to get to. Off the top of my head, Ace of Spades, The Chosen and the Beautiful, and The Ones We're Meant to Find. I have seen them all over my timeline and they all, I believe, got released, if not on the same day, around the same time and I just haven't got around to it, but I'm definitely making sure that I'm gonna get around to reading them this year. Hello, editing Samira here. Since I filmed this video, I've actually completed Ace of Spades, so I figured I'd just quickly touch upon it because I just cannot not talk about it in this video. If you do not know what Ace of Spades is about, it's basically Gossip Girl meets Get Out, which is just, everything and i can firmly say that this book fully delivered on that promise it was genius so fast paced so easy to get sucked into the world i was so invested from the first page and it definitely has the drama the messiness that's so iconic and indicative of gossip girl that in itself just made it so much fun but i love the fact that while it still has that sort of fun element it also still touches upon very real topic i just love the fact that books like this are coming out especially in the YA genre have like their fun time but also are able to discuss and touch upon very real topics that are going on in everyday life especially in this case towards black people so in regards to classism racism both systematic and systemic if you haven't read it please go read it it was amazing and i listened to it as an audiobook which i suggest you do reading it it immerses you, but listening to it is a whole other experience. If you haven't read it yet, you should definitely remedy that. Next up, we have the most anticipated release for the second half of the year. There are so many to even think about, but the one that comes to mind is She Who Became the Sun. And it's coming out at the end of next month, I believe, and I cannot wait to read it. I've heard that it's a mix between the Poppy War and um, move on. I've been trying to find something to fill the void ever since I finished The Poppy War and that's honestly one of my favorite series. So just hearing that combination has me so excited and I cannot wait to get my hands on it and I'm gonna read it as soon as it comes out. Okay, now we're ready for possible controversy, a hot take for my biggest disappointment of this year. We have the Crown of Gilded Bones. Okay, we have a lot to discuss about this book. I did not struggle with the sequel as much as I did with the third book, and I honestly believe it's because there was such a big gap in between me reading the sequel and me reading the third book that I didn't have the energy or the fuel to propel me through the third book like I did with the second book. And also, I just find that like the sequel, the pacing increased in a fairly consistent pace whereas if we're talking about the third book the third book's pacing was all over the place miss jla she desperately needs to condense her books there is no reason for those books to be 700 plus pages absolutely not the pacing was just all over the place i was struggling a lot i inhaled the first and second book within like a day or two each this book I avoided for maybe two months. I didn't finish it until maybe like two weeks ago. That in itself should tell you something, how much I was struggling with this book. Another thing that made me very disappointed with this book was the fact that the beginning, it started off with a bang. I was like, yes, okay, I'm here for it. This has the potential to be the best book out of this whole series so far. And then the way the momentum just plummeted and stayed that way for the majority of the middle of the book and we were just coasting and then it starts to pick up towards the end of the book but like i said the change in pace constantly was just taking me out of it and fatiguing me so much that yeah a certain trope happened at the end of the third book that 
First of all, never sits well with me. I cannot stand this trope. And then it was thrown into this book with certain circumstances surrounding it. I absolutely hated it. Also to add to why this was such a big disappointment for me, I went into the book knowing that the series was supposed to be a trilogy originally, but then right before or right after the third book came out, it was announced that it's gonna be a six book series instead of a trilogy. And I just don't have the stamina to read series that long anymore. That just already made me really nervous because I said, okay, instead of things getting tied up in the third book, we're just imploding things instead. That already kind of gave me trust issues with it. And with how everything went down towards the end of the book, I just, will I be continuing the series? Most likely because I need answers. I honestly might just wait until maybe the fourth and fifth book come out. But then again, I don't want to be spoiled. So I guess it's just a matter of time to see how I feel about continuing the series. Now for biggest surprise of this year, I would definitely say this is how you lose the time war. I went in not knowing anything about it and I came out not knowing what exactly I experienced until maybe a few hours later. <laughs> Definitely that, and I would also have to say, you deserve each other. Let me tell you, I almost DNF'd this book so many times, and the amount of my mutuals that had told me that they hated this book the first half, but then somehow they all gave it five stars. I'm too nosy for my own good, so I had to see why that was. I will say, I absolutely hated them the first half. I was like, okay, I understand y'all are fiancés that hate each other. Just break up already, okay? Save us all the heartache, save us all the time and energy, and just break up. This was peak hate. They hated each other's guts. I was like, there's no way, there's no way this relationship can be saved. This book was just pure genius with how the author handled how much they went from hating each other's guts to actually reconciling in a very healthy way. That could have easily been botched. It could have easily been handled so badly. It could have just been an abrupt change, but no, it actually was handled so well. That's why it boosted up to a five because I could not believe how Miss Sarah Hogle was able to manage that. It was able to pull that off in such a good way. I couldn't help but give it five stars. So yeah, I cannot recommend enough. And just to tell you how much I love this book, I usually don't buy physical copies of books I've already read. I ended up loving it so much that I ended up going out of my way and buying a physical copy. I don't ever do that unless I absolutely adore a book. And yeah, that's, that's how I feel about this book. And if you haven't read this, I highly recommend. It's absolutely so good, chef's kiss hate to love excellence and yeah pick this up next up we have favorite new author either debut or new to you so i have two authors for this so we have katie robert and alicia rai following chain of iron i have read so many romance books to fill the void and that's how i got introduced to katie robert and alicia rai and i actually loved every single book of theirs i've read so far and i now will read anything that they come out with. Katie Robert and Alicia Rye just have a way of writing romance that just has me slapping your hand over your face, giggling butterflies in your stomach, the whole shebang. So good. They're definitely my new favorite romance authors. So for newest fictional crush, if we're talking unrealistic expectations, Hades from Neon Gods. If we're talking about realistic expectations, I would say Nicholas from You Deserve Each Other and Alex from People We Meet on Vacation. Yeah. <laughs> Most favorite character, I would definitely say Lucy from The House in the Cerulean Sea. Lucy is short for Lucifer. <laughs> And I just adore that little small child so so much and yeah, I just adore him. Books that made you cry. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> For honorable mentions, I will say Stationery Shop and Crying in H Mart. Book that made you happy. I will definitely say The House in the Cerulean Sea. That book was just pure serotonin in a book. I have never felt so happy while reading a book 
it was just pure joy if you just want happy vibes 24 7 definitely pick that book up i have never felt so happy and sunshiny and rainbows after reading a book until i read that for the most beautiful book you've bought so far this year i have these two editions of chain of iron yes i caved i got both of these can we take a look um beautiful wow yes my emo heart is just any other book i've bought pales in comparison but yeah they're just stunning and i am so glad i ended up caving and getting these next up what books do you need to read by the end of the year far too many i'll quickly show the ones that i really need to get to the ones that are priority for me this year that i personally told myself i need to read these before the end of the year or else i'll consider myself a failure and finally for best book adaptation of this year i think we all know the answer for this hands down shadow and bone the best book adaptation i have seen since the hunger games possibly even better i'm obsessed i've probably watched it three to four times at this point will i stop probably not i also have a full-on discussion with mariam from mariam read sometimes and daria from full of lit where we discuss all of our thoughts and feelings about the show so if you want to watch it i'll link it down below so i think that closes out this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed and let me know if any of these made it onto your mid-year book freak out please discuss with me in the comments below and let me know what books you think I should read before the year ends. So yeah, until next time, bye!